Hey guys and welcome back for another video tutorial with Dr. Dalio. Today we're going to be going over uh, modeling of an RC beam or reinforced concrete beam uh, using a four point bend test. It's basically going to be uh, the static structural version of my other video that I did in explicit dynamics. However this time we're going to be doing it in static structural um, which is actually a um, request from many uh, YouTubers so I decided to, to put out this video. Um, it's going to be using different geometry. It's going to be uh, basically something similar to this, a concrete beam under four-point loading. And I'm basically going to be showing you how to get crack and crush plots and also the uh, stress results using, uh, using ANSYS. So basically the model that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be taking it from uh, somebody called uh, uh, Mr. Nguyen and the uh, title of the uh, report was Modeling of Reinforced Concrete Beam. So this is the beam and then there's going to be basically uh, two uh, loads uh, at one third of, of the length and uh, in our ANSYS model we're going to be cutting it right here and we're going to be doing a half model in order to save on calculation time. So we're going to be doing the half model and creating a symmetry plane here. And the rebar, we're going to be having four rebars here at the bottom and they're spaced out 50 millimeters each way. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's open up a new project and save it and then um, basically drag in a static structural. Then here we're going to go ahead and call this concrete static and then double click on geometry to start the geometry modeler. Once you're in Modeler, click on the XY plane, look at it, go into Sketching, and then choose Units and then Millimeters. Then select the rectangle, uh, snap to the origin, and then draw the rectangle, go into Dimensions, and then we're going to dimension the height of this to be uh, 400, and uh, the, um, the length of this here we're going to go ahead and put half of 5.5 meters, which is 2750 millimeters. Look at that again. So there we have our half model beam. Next, we want to draw the impactor. So we'll go ahead and draw a rectangle right here, snapping on this edge. And then we're going to dimension this. This doesn't have to be exactly these dimensions, but just something like, I'd say, 100 millimeters. And then the other, uh, the height of this will be, let's say, 20. And then clicking on this point here and this edge here will give a dimension from the edge, which is a one third, which is approximately 1,800. So there we go. Next, we're going to want to go into modeling and then uh, click on our sketch and then click on extrude and then hit apply. And then here we're going to do add frozen because we don't want these two bodies to be joined together when we extrude. And then we're going to put the depth at 250 millimeters and hit generate. So there we have it. There's our concrete beam and our impactor. The support, we're just going to support it on this edge here. So we're not going to draw any supports. Next, we need to draw the rebar. So we're going to go ahead and click on the Z here to look again at this view. Next, using the face selector, we're going to click on this face. And we're going to click on this button here, which is to create a new plane. Once we have the new plane selected, we're going to go ahead and offset this plane on the z-axis and then we're going to go ahead and insert negative 50 millimeters. So we're going to offset the plane about negative 50 into the material and generate because that's where we want to draw our rebar. Now clicking on the plane and click on look at again, we're going to go ahead into sketching and then we're going to click on line snapping to this edge and keeping the H there for horizontal and snapping on the other edge we're going to draw out our line which is will be our rebar. Click on dimension then click on this point and then the bottom face here and then we're going to set this off by 50 millimeters. Next we want to create uh, we want to basically transform this line into a body so what we're going to do is we're going to go into concept lines from sketches and then we select the sketch that we just drew and hit apply and then generate so now we have a line body but now this line body needs a cross section. If you go ahead into the bodies here, it needs a cross section. So we're going to go in concept, cross section, circular, and then we're going to add a um, six millimeter radius or 12 mi millimeter diameter cross, a circular cross section. Then in the line body, we can go ahead and choose that circular right there. 
Next, one is not enough, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pattern this out. So we're going to go and create, pattern. Now the geometry we want to pattern is line body, and then apply. The direction, we'll click on this direction here, and then hit apply using that edge. And then we're going to space it out 50 millimeters, and we're going to add three more copies, and then we're going to hit generate. So there you have it, you got your three line bodies. Next, we're going to join these together and form it a new part just for simplicity, and we're going to call this rebar. And we're going to call this, right click, rename, concrete, and then this here, we'll call this impactor. So there we have it, now you have all the geometry needed. So we're going to minimize that and move on to the next step by double clicking on model. This will load up the mechanical interface. Once we've loaded up this interface, I'm just going to show you what we need to do next. I'm going to be using a 30 megapascal uh, stress strain curve for the concrete. And I'm also going to be adding some, some values that I in inputted for the uniaxial tensile cracking and crushing stress. So these values are coefficients that need to be uh, inputted. So this is the concrete code. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then in geometry, I'm going to right click on concrete insert and insert the command for it. Make sure that your units are in millimeters, kilograms. And then we're going to go ahead and paste this code. So basically this tape, this, this over here is basically defining this, it's overriding the material of steel because you can't actually, um, you know, it's a bit complicated in workbench. You don't have the default uh, concrete properties in engineering data, you have to actually input them um, using a command object, unfortunately. So, by, in order to define solid 65 element. So we're going to define here, we're overriding the concrete, uh, this, sorry, the structural steel with this command. We're defining this material now as a solid 65, which is a concrete material. And we have the Young's modulus Poisson ratio. And then these are again the TB data, the coefficients that I mentioned here. You can learn more about it in the help menu. Or again here, these are the coefficients here in order. So the 1 1.3.8, 1 1.5, 25, that, those are these coefficients here in the order for the open shear, closed shear, the cracking stress, stress and the crushing stress. So these are just some values. There's not actual values, I just made them up. Um, so this would be like 1.5 megapascals if you're using these units of, of millimeter kilogram Newton. And then here we have our MISO, which is our multilinear isotropic hardening. And we're going to, this is the, the table data for the stress and the strain points uh, uh, as I showed you here in this plot. So this is the stress strain table data. So this means that there's 35 inputs and it's at a temperature of 22 and there's our data. So there we go, that's defining our concrete material. Next for a rebar, we need to also define a material. So we're going to insert commands for each one of these rebars. And then we're going to have, we have four of them. So then next we're going to open up again um, this over here. And we're going to go ahead and take um, the code for the rebar. Now the rebar uh, basically has a, a yield uh, limit at 460 newtons per uh, millimeter square. And then basically plat isn't plateau after, actually has a tangent modulus that I put, which is uh, 2100. You can change this later. And then the R here, again, is the radius of your rebar. And then this is the Young modulus. And then we're defining this material. Again, we're overriding the steel, and we're calling it link 180. So that's what happens when you insert a command. You basically override the original material of steel to a link 180 material with these properties. So we're going to go ahead and copy these and paste them into each one of them. And then once we have that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and add our symmetry so that we're done with the geometry. So we can right click on model, insert symmetry, right click, insert symmetric region, and then using the face selector here, we'll select this face here. And then we want it to be normal to the X axis, which is correct. So that'll be our symmetry plane. And then next up, our connections, it already detected a contact between the punch and the top of the concrete. But we're just gonna change this to no separation and we're going to change the formulation to MPC, which will connect the, um, the nodes together. So that'll be our connection. 
And then next we can go ahead into the meshing and then choose an element size of 50 millimeters. And then we can generate the mesh and see what that looks like. And there you have it, there's your mesh. You can also right click on this here and then after selecting it and click on hide body and there's your, uh, there's your meshing for your rebar. Right click show all bodies and there we have it. Next we're going to add, we're going to go into the static structural. So here we're going to add our loads and boundary conditions. So what we're going to do here is uh, first we need to insert a command to join the concrete with the rebar. So we need to right click and insert a command object. Unfortunately my screen doesn't show it here but just under motion loads there is something called command objects which I have to, uh, which I, I can't really show in my screen. But you can go ahead and right click insert and then there's under this should be a com uh, command object insert that and then you should get this over here once you have that we're gonna paste in uh, some more code in the preprocessor and basically what this does is it selects all 65 elements which is the concrete elements and selects all 180 which is the link elements and then this command here joins them together so it joins the nodes together and basically that's how you connect your um, rebar with your concrete and uh, so there we have that. So the, once that's done, we want to go ahead and add our load. So we're going to add a pressure. We're going to click on this here, apply, and we're going to add a pressure of 9 megapascals. Again, this is not anything tested. This is just for demo purposes. Uh, I haven't verified any of these results. So we're going to put 9 megapascals as a pressure. And for the support here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a nodal support. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here and do select mesh. And then I'm going to select these uh, points here using the control key. I'm going to select the mesh here. So I select these six points. And then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to insert and uh, create a name selection. And then I'm going to call this support. Support. Then that's done. So now I have my support under name selection. And then in static structural, I'm going to insert nodal displacement. So I want to fix these nodes. Uh, I'm going to allow it move freely in the x direction. In the y, I'm going to fix it. And then in the z, I'm going to fix it as well. And then under the name selection here, I'm going to choose support. And the reason I'm not fixing it in the x is because we already have our symmetry plane here, which fixes it in the x direction. So it will be fully uh, defined that way. So there's our support, there's our load, and uh, there we go. And then now we're ready to go ahead and insert our crack, uh, insert our stress uh, plot. So we can go ahead and do uh, von Mises stress. We can also get out the maximum principle since it's a brittle material. And then here we're going to insert a command object, and we're going to get our crack and crush plots using this command here. And this basically launches the PL crack command. And uh, I'll have again all this, all these commands in the description below. So once you insert that, we can go ahead, right click, and uh, solve. So here our solution is solving. It shouldn't take too long. And then once that's done, there we have it. Again, this is actually it doesn't represent the deformation very well in ANSYS for some reason in Workbench. Uh, if you bring it into APDL, you'll get a proper deformed result. Um, so I'm just going to leave this at undeformed just so we can see things a bit clearer here. So the equivalent stress is actually for, for the uh, puncher and the concrete, but we're actually just interested in the concrete, so we'll go actually ahead and right click, clear this data, and then we're going to choose instead of all bodies, select the body, we'll just choose the concrete and apply. Right click and we'll evaluate that. So there we go, there's the concrete. So as you can see, uh, it, it hits maximum with 9 megapascals. So it hits about 29.7 megapascals, which is all this area here. So that's that reached its plateau limit. And um, that's basic, so that's the stress plot. And you can go ahead and see the, uh, the command, which is the crack crush plot. And then here you have the cracks and the crush uh, shown here. This is, this is uh, an APDL command, and if you want to have more insight on just let's say, showing the first stage cracks, second stage cracks, you can go ahead and um, open this in APDL um, by, by basically going in here and dragging an APDL command over this, 
and you can go ahead and see the results uh, a bit better in there. But this is the Workbench tutorial, so I'm showing you guys how to quickly get some results here in Workbench. So these are your cracking and your crushing plots. As you can see here, it's at the final time step, and it says crack and crush. So there you have it. Um, that's how you basically um, basically add rebar to your uh, your concrete and how to define a concrete system. Again, these values, you should probably change them and the table data as well um, to suit your material as well as the you know the diameter of your rebar and the um, the yield limit of your of your rebar as well and young modulus. So this just gives you an overview of how to do it in Workbench. There's other tutorials that show you how to do it in APDL. Um, which, which is a bit maybe more difficult, but as you can see here, it's not any easier because you have to add commands to every single step. So we have command objects for our defining our concrete elements, for our rebar elements, um, to join the elements, and then finally to output the crack crush plot, which doesn't exist in Workbench. Um, so yeah, so it's a bit complicated, but nonetheless, we did this in maybe about under 16 minutes. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, if you did, uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, that I really appreciate it, and you can go ahead and hit the like button, and if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, put them in the comment section below, and if you guys ever verify this with an actual test, I'd be really curious to know, you can go ahead and drop me an email in my about page, and uh, I'd be really curious to see uh, if these results uh, coincide with the real test results. So thanks again, and uh, see you next time.